And that's just the tithe. I mean, and, that's nothing special. And isn't that's it just fun? doing what God the called us to so do. Giving is so fun. Oh, it's joyful. You know, J. Vernon McGee is an old Southern preacher, and he's passed on now. But I used to listen to him as a young bride, and he had this strong Texas accent, J. Vernon McGee. And one of the things he said was, when it comes to giving, people, some people say, give until it hurts. He says, if it hurts, don't give. Yeah. God because loves a cheerful exactly, giver. Exactly. That's the whole point. Yeah. And so we want to give cheerfully in that way. And there's added blessing in that. So that's the, that's the, the first 10. Right. And, and then the second 10? Well, the next 10% is savings. Now, I like that you say can save so that you can right. save. And some will immediately say, well, I can't save. I'm just weak and buy. Right. There is nothing extra to put away. Right, right. How and, did you deal and, with well, that? Well, the way you can deal with that is that when we get to the final 80% and we show you how to spend wisely, that it will free up some of your income mm. to be able to come back and save. So you channel that money that you're, that you're not spending in the 80%. When you're spending wisely, you're actually saving money and you're not spending as much money. So you take that and you put it immediately towards your savings. Now, when it comes to savings, it, the, the first thing that people need to do is they need to realize that they need to have anywhere from three to six months worth of savings in just a regular passbook type of savings account. If you're a dual income family, you need at least three months it, of is that worth just of your, living expenses. Is that emergency fund? It is. I mean, we really need that, and it makes a lot of sense. If there's a job loss, a layoff, if there's a medical issue and you can't work, I mean, it's, it's all these emergency rainy day type of things that come up. If you have a reserve, then you're not putting money on your credit card. And you're not slapping money on there. So we have to have a reserve of some kind. So three months, if you're dual income, three months worth of living expenses should be in the bank. If you're single income, just one provider in the family, then you need to have six to eight months worth of living expenses in the bank. Now that's what happens with our savings because people say, well, what about investments? Because you know, that's part of the 10% too, is the, the whole investment exactly. area. And most people don't have, most average uh, Americans do not have the three to six months and they're already talking about investments. So let's have first things first and mm -hmm. let's just get that basic savings built up. You've got seniors trying to live right. off a, a, a diminished interest right. and principal right. Right. because of this financial crash. Yes. So it's, it, it, I'm sure it's panic city for a lot of people. Right. So to try and get on some sort of recovery ground, right. how now shall we live? Yes, and you know, there's a real fear mentality that is out there. And of course, it's not like the fear mentality is completely unjustified. There is job loss, uh, costs are going up. Uh, our resources are diminishing in terms of our investments and the homes that we have. I mean, there's some serious things going on out there, but my word to give to, to viewers today is that perfect love casts out fear. And there is no need to operate in fear. I don't think God wants us to have a fear motivation. I think he wants us to have a love motivation. And that is that we love God, we love his word, mm. we, and we want to get our finances in order accordingly. And when we do that, we're gonna find that things are really, really working out. And there's hope. Mm. There's no need for fear, but there's hope. Some of God's promises are gonna sound audacious, really, especially in these times. But as a poor Bible college student, with no income, uh, you know, I camped on some of these promises and watched God prove that every word he says is reliable. Uh, here's just one example, 2 Corinthians 9, 11. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And that's not the verse I meant to read. Uh, well, here's the, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. There's the other translation of that. You can be generous on every occasion. And you know, there were circumstances, just somebody's birthday or something special, and you wanted to, to give. Right. And just what you've said, whether God uh, provided what I needed in some other way, and so therefore I had that extra income, or you know, I remember once opening a card from a sweet elderly lady in my church, and out fell a $10 bill. I needed that $10. Right. It was right. right on time. And I know that may sound very tiny, but in multiple tiny 
provisions. Exactly. Small and big. God does what he says he will do. He absolutely does. And we can try him in that. Actually, my daughter right now goes to Moody Bible Institute. So, at, and we believe in helping our children through college, but we also believe in the value of a work ethic. So we don't write a check and just cover everything for them. They have to earn part of it as well. And if they don't spend their money wisely, then reality is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter is a little bit more like her dad in terms of the fact that she's a board spender uh, of all the children. She's probably the, the, the biggest board spender. And so she, we have to let her learn kind of the hard way. And she couldn't afford coffee that week in the store. And so she was a little bit disappointed because she couldn't afford to buy coffee to take back to her dorm room and make. And two days later, she was at worship team and she was kind of talking about, oh, well, I couldn't buy coffee this week. And, you know, she's just kind of chatting. And a woman came up to her afterwards, gave her $40 and said, honey, go buy some coffee. So see, God takes care of the little things if we'll just trust him. You know, the title of your book may be a little off-putting for those who are struggling. You don't mind me saying this, do you? No, I don't. Uh, but I, I, I want you to just clarify that in, in, in saying living rich, what we mean. mean. What, what do you mean? Yeah, okay. What we mean is when, when I surveyed people for the book, we were coming up with a title. I asked your average American, I said, if you could put your kids through college debt free, if you could buy cars that are paid for, if uh, upon retirement you have your house completely paid off, if you have no consumer debt, if you can wear nice clothes, if you can take modest vacations, would you consider, if you can give to the poor in, in doing all of that, would you consider yourself rich? And 9.5 out of 10 said yes. Mm -hmm. That would be a rich lifestyle to us. So just, you know, being able to live debt free, being able to help people and to be generous with others is truly a rich lifestyle. Well, it's what Jesus promised in John 10.10. 10. The abundant life isn't the life of riches. It's about living life richly. Yes. In him, with him, for him. Right. And, you know, the added benefit of, of the, the rich lifestyle that we've talked about where you're operating on a debt-free basis, the added benefit of that is, is there's less strife in the home because the number one reason for divorce is arguments over money. Indeed. And so you minimize that those arguments and there's more peace in the home and of course you know that is a huge blessing and that's living rich because you you live in peace and contentment with your family members hmm. henry david thoreau said money is not required to buy one necessity of the soul yes and i i love that you started in in the pit financially in overwhelm financially with joy and optimism you had each other, and you had confidence that God would take you where you needed to go. Right, and that is the message that I want viewers to get today, that there is hope. No matter where you are, no matter what kind of pit you're in, God is deeper still than where you are, and He can reach down, He can pull you out, and He can set your feet on a solid rock if you will just give your finances to Him. Ellie, this is real encouragement. Thousands, thousands of um, really great things that you can apply, practical help in this book, Living Rich for Less. Create the lifestyle you want by giving, saving, and spending smart. Sounds like a full orb life to me. And I, I just want folks to see this again because I, I just think this is, this is where we want to be. The sweetest dollar you ever make is the one you can give away. You can give away. The safest dollar you ever make is the one you can put away. The smartest dollar you ever make is the one you spend well. I think we've all been challenged to do all three. Ellie, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Really great to be with you today.